Amazon is working with the Chinese Communist Party to do business in China, but it's dangerous for the rest of the world. Welcome to China Uncensored, I'm Chris Chappell. This episode is sponsored by Brilliant. Brilliant is a problem-solving based website and app that teaches you math, physics, programming, and more. It gives you challenges with interactive visuals to help you actually learn, not memorize. It makes learning fun. I'll show you how at the end. So, do you ever worry as you ask Alexa to order toothpaste through same-day prime delivery while watching Fire TV with your Kindle, that Amazon might just be taking over the world? Look, I'm not saying Amazon founder Jeff Bezos is an evil genius bent on world domination, but he went from selling books on the internet to launching a totally normal looking rocket into space. Plus, there's this. <laughs> He's been practicing that laugh. Amazon is now the world's largest internet company. It's also the world's largest online retailer. It has the world's biggest cloud computing service. And it's the number one reason workers pee into plastic Coke bottles. But of all the shady things Amazon has done, working with the Chinese Communist Party might just be the worst because it puts all of us in danger. You might have seen some headlines recently about how Amazon silenced criticism of Chinese leader Xi Jinping in order to do business in China. Amazon didn't just scrub negative reviews of Xi Jinping's books. They took out all customer ratings and reviews on Amazon China. Don't even think about leaving a review. And it looks like they did the same to the selected works of Mao Zedong can't be too careful. Of course, that only applies to books on Amazon's China website. On Amazon's regular website, Xi Jinping's Governance of China Volume 3 has more than 60 five-star ratings without reviews. Oh, come on. The Chinese Communist Party couldn't pay their Wu Mao's a little more to write actual reviews of the book, too? But Amazon China disabling reviews of Xi Jinping's books just scratches the surface. To do business in China, Amazon has done a lot worse. In fact, Amazon directly partnered with one of the Chinese regime's propaganda arms. Let me show you a little section of Amazon called China Books. To be clear, this is not on their China website, it's on their regular website. What type of China Books are featured? Funny you should ask. But I don't want you to think China Books is just books by Xi Jinping. Let's check out their English language books section, which starts with Xi Jinping on the Governance of China, Volume 3. Xi Jinping on the Governance of China, Volume 2. Xi Jinping on the Governance of China, Volume 1. Up and Out of Poverty by Xi Jinping. Xi Jinping, Wit and Vision. Xi Jinping, Important Speeches at the Belt and Road Forum. Xi Jinping selected speeches at the G20 Hangzhou Summit. Xi Jinping important speeches at the BRICS Xiamen Summit. The Belt and Road Initiative by Xi Jinping. Finally, a non-Xi Jinping book. The Selected Works of Jiang Zemin, Volume 1. This is the worst book list I've ever seen. How did this happen? China Books is a partnership that launched in 2011 between Amazon and China International Book Trading Corp, or CIBTC. CIBTC is a subsidiary of China International Publishing Group. That's a publishing company directly owned by the Chinese Communist Party. So Amazon is helping a company ultimately owned by the Chinese Communist Party push their propaganda through this China Books website. When asked about this by Reuters, Amazon defended itself by claiming that China Books is an additional channel for serving our Chinese readers in the United States and elsewhere. 
and that CIBTC is just one of the millions of selling partners around the world offering products in our stores. Sure it is. But despite their protests, Amazon knew exactly what they were doing with China Books. They were willing to push propaganda for the Communist Party in exchange for access to the China market. I'll tell you how they did it after the break. Welcome back. Amazon claims its actions in China are just about complying with applicable laws and regulations, and that they're just providing access to diverse perspectives, including books which some people might find objectionable. But behind closed doors, they were saying something different. Reuters got a copy of an internal 2018 Amazon briefing document. It was prepared for Jay Carney, the senior vice president of global corporate affairs at Amazon. Carney was a press secretary during the Obama administration. He joined Amazon in 2015 and oversees public relations and public policy for Amazon's global businesses. Carney was getting ready to travel to China for Amazon 2018. Part of the briefing document he was given said this, Ideological control and propaganda is the core of the toolkit for the Communist Party to achieve and maintain its success, and we are not making judgment on whether it is right or wrong. Okay, so maybe it's not a surprise that a company started by this guy <laughs> refused to make a moral judgment about the Chinese regime's propaganda and ideological control. But Amazon did more than just not judge. They found out how they could help China spread propaganda. According to a former Amazon executive, back in 2011, Amazon was having a hard time getting government approvals to sell the Kindle and e-books in China. And that gave the Chinese regime leverage over Amazon, according to the former executive. Now that's something that happens to every foreign company that goes into China. But Amazon got creative. They came up with an idea. The China Books Project. According to the former Amazon executive, it was a way to get what Amazon wanted on Kindle and other things. He called it a wink and a nod. So while Amazon claims China Books was just one of many normal partnerships with different sellers, they actually pitched it to the Chinese regime. Here's how Amazon described it. Both China Books and Kindle Chinese eBook Store are Amazon China's main commitment to assist China in going abroad, an umbrella project that aims to promote Chinese culture to the world. So Amazon admits China Books was a way to help the Chinese Communist Party with their going abroad policy. But the going abroad, also known as going out policy, wasn't about promoting Chinese culture. The going out policy was about projecting the Chinese communist power to the rest of the world. Economic power through Chinese companies and investments abroad, political power through international organizations, and soft power through cultural influence. And China Books was part of that soft power. There was a ceremony for its launch back in 2011. In October 2012, China Books was awarded the title A Key National Culture Export Project by a group of Chinese government bodies. That included the Communist Party's propaganda department. And two months later, Amazon launched its electronic books business in China and soon began selling Kindles. Of course, the China Books Project was a financial flop. Few of the portal's titles have sold well, and Amazon even shipped back books because its warehouse lacked space for them. But that's not the important part. For the Chinese Communist Party, China Books was a showpiece for their going out policy. They got a parade around the fact that a huge foreign company like Amazon was working with them. For Amazon, China Books was a signal that they would play ball with the Chinese regime. It was their way into the China market. And by 2017, China had become the largest global market for the Kindle. Now that's what I call win-win mutual cooperation. So that's why when Amazon executive Jay Carney visited China in 2018, he met with Zhang Fuhai, 
unofficial, from the Communist Party-owned publishing company, CIPG. And he said Amazon would make every effort to promote China Books and make it bigger and stronger. But while Amazon cynically furthering the Chinese Communist Party's propaganda goals might be gross, they're doing something else that's even more disturbing. More after the break. Welcome back. While Amazon's Kindle sales in China were doing great, not all of its businesses were. Its e-commerce business in China couldn't compete with other Chinese e-commerce giants like Alibaba. And while Amazon has recruited lots of Chinese sellers on its main Amazon.com platform, that's caused its own problems, including banned, unsafe, and mislabeled products. But the biggest danger for Amazon in China, and for all of us, is its cloud computing business, Amazon Web Services, or AWS. AWS is now one of the largest providers to Chinese companies globally. And that's a big problem. Amazon started having issues with AWS in China in 2016. That's when the Communist Party said only Chinese companies could be licensed to provide cloud services in China. So Amazon did the same thing other foreign companies did. They handed off their cloud computing technology to local Chinese companies. That way, they could still operate AWS in China. The Chinese companies, not Amazon, were responsible for monitoring and taking down illegal content, collecting and reporting basic information of customers, and working with PRC authorities. So the Chinese companies could do the Communist Party's dirty work, and Amazon could keep selling their cloud services in China. Great idea. And that worked until 2018, when China's Ministry of Public Security demanded that Amazon censor a Chinese dissident. The Ministry of Public Security threatened to retaliate against Amazon unless it removed content and blocked a website it hosted in the United States for Guo Wenghui. Guo Wenghui, also known as Miles Guo, is a Chinese billionaire who fled to the U.S. and launched a media network that's critical of the Chinese regime. According to Amazon's internal document, Amazon refused to censor Guo. But they did something arguably worse. The company asked Guo to take an action that exposed the dissident's IP address, and they gave the IP address to the Ministry of Public Security. Wow. Now, whatever you think of Guo Wenghui, that's not important here. It doesn't matter who the Communist Party was targeting. The point is, Amazon was willing to give the party a Chinese dissident's IP address, especially when Guo was in the U.S. at the time. According to Amazon's internal document, Jay Carney was advised to tell the Chinese regime they shouldn't make requests like that for data stored outside China. But it's not clear whether Carney brought this up with Chinese officials at all. In any case, Amazon's actions don't seem to have overly upset the Communist Party. Amazon has been allowed to expand their cloud services in China, including to major Chinese companies like ByteDance, which owns TikTok, and Hikvision, which makes surveillance equipment. Like I said earlier, Amazon has the world's largest cloud computing service. We all use websites every day that rely on AWS. And Amazon has shown they're willing to at least partially cave to the Chinese Communist Party's demands. And that's dangerous for all of us outside China too. What happens if the Chinese regime demands even more information from Amazon in order to keep their business there? China books may not be the worst thing Amazon does to sell out to the Chinese regime. And this episode is sponsored by Brilliant. If you like learning cool stuff, you'll love Brilliant. Brilliant has more than 60 math and science courses. Interactive lessons help you understand concepts in ways they never taught you in school. From basic geometry to calculus. From neural networks to casino probability. Brilliant challenges you and expands your mind. With Brilliant, it's all hands-on and lots more fun than learning from a book. It's great for kids in school, for university students, and for any adult who just wants to up their game. So check out Brilliant. 
You can try it out for free, and if you want premium access to all the courses, good news. Because they're offering a 20% discount for the first 200 people that sign up using our link. So go to brilliant.org slash China Uncensored and sign up now for your seven day free trial. Seriously, check out Brilliant. It's really cool. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. Thanks for watching China Uncensored. Thank you.